All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to walk through the electric circuits, um, part one. Uh, we're introducing Ohm's Law and a couple of uh, other rules when you're looking at circuits uh, when pertaining to AP Physics 1. The things look a little bit different when you look into AP Physics 2 or AP Physics C, E, and M. Um, however, we're just going to look at um, just some basic things here, and the math does get a little tricky, but when we get there, we'll get there. First thing we're talking about in this class, what I want to say is that voltage, potential difference, and what's called EMF, which is electromotive force, are all the same. So voltage, potential difference, and EMF, and according to this class, are all the same. Every once in a while, they might try to trick you up and ask for the potential difference across a certain resistor or potential difference across a certain object. and um, that's just simply saying, what is the voltage? Uh, electromotive force is something used a little bit more uh, commonly in AP Physics 2. However, from time to time, it will pop up. It just means the same thing. It is denoted by that Greek letter sigma, the lowercase sigma right here. As far as voltage goes, the volts, if you look under the, the hood of the volts, you get joules per coulomb. And so that just tells you uh, how much energy per charge. Um, and that's really always when we come to voltage, that's always kind of look at is um, energy per charge. In order to make a circuit work, you have to have three things. You have to have the source of energy. That's usually going to be a battery or a power source. Um, when we look at this class, um, a battery is going to be kind of our, our best bet. A closed path, so if you notice here, and I were to kind of follow this wire right here. You notice the wire has a place to start, a place to end. It's called a closed path. If at any point I were to come through and, and delete or snip off a part of this wire, the circuit that would be called open. So what does an example of that look like? If I were to say, for example, um, bring in another light bulb here, uh, and not have that wire connecting back, this part right here would be considered open and it would not work. You also need something which, uh, a device which uses your energy and that's going to be, uh, in this case, the light bulb. If I were to create what something's called a short circuit, so I can have connected the wires right here together, the electricity would, or these electrons more specifically, would have a shorter path to go, and so this wouldn't. This would actually cause your circuit to not work. If you hook up batteries like this, they tend to overheat and um, and go bad. Um, if you do this in a household, you tend to blow a fuse or cause some of those sort of major problems. So three things you need: you need um, a source of energy, closed path, and a device which uses that energy. All three must be there. When you think about voltage, uh, often they use like high voltage, danger. Well, voltage, the only thing that voltage is, is you can think of it as the pressure in the system. So you think of your, your water pressure in your house causing things to happen. Same thing can be said about voltage. It's just the pressure of the electrons or the charge flowing through the system. So that's why that, that looking at from the charge where it begins to where it ends, um, that's more specifically how is that pressure maintaining itself throughout the whole circuit? However, the one part that, that this introduces the part that is actually dangerous, and that is what's called is current. Current is denoted by this letter I. Now, it looks like my slides didn't transfer over quite well, so I'm going to see if I can move those around just a little bit. And I'm just going to bring this right on down here. And there we go. So current is the rate at which your charges flow through that surface or through a wire. It is denoted as charge per time interval. If you look on your reference sheet for the class, you'll find that your I is denoted by your change in charge over your change in time. So if you know how the charges change, if it increases or decreases for some time interval, you can find the current. 
How is current calculated? Well, that is coulombs per second. Charge, sorry, the current is uh, measured in amps or amperes, or sometimes just known as capital A. And when we talk about this class, what direction does the current flow? So over here, here's my battery. There's that sim sigma symbol I was talking about. The current travels from the positive to the negative of my battery. So if you notice this little arrow right here is denoting the direction of my current. When it comes to this class, you actually don't talk about alternating current at all. Uh, we do talk about it in this class just so that you understand what's going on, but you won't show up any very many questions, if any at all. So direct current is the direction that a current flows through a circuit. So back to my battery here, um, that direct current flows one way. And then on top of that, I was talking about what it looks current look like. Uh, current flows one, one direction in direct current. For example, when we use batteries, um, when you look at alternating current, because they're in something that has a higher voltage, those electrons bounce back and forth between going and coming, and that allows for a higher energy efficiency. So the current alternates between positive and negative. When you look at AC, we're not going to do those at all. We're only going to look at if your current source is held constant or direct current. This helps us get into what is called Ohm's Law. So if we look at the system, let me move my graph down here a little bit so we can see things just a little bit better. If we look at a system or a circuit more specifically, if we increase the voltage in that circuit and we record the current, the slope of your line would then be resistance. So this is Ohm's Law. So the voltage or potential difference or electromotive force is directly related to current when resistance is constant. And so if you look here, you see this. There's two annotations here when it comes to Ohm's Law. Both mean the same thing. So we see here is that voltage is or your potential difference is proportional to current. So V equals IR. You'll often notice that we're just going to use this equation quite a bit. So this is something you want to put in your back pocket. Well, how do we record these things? Or how does what does resistance look like? And so what we have is we have voltage, which is recorded in volts, current, which is recorded in amps, and then we have resistance, which is then recorded in ohms. So the higher amount of ohms, the more resistance an object has. You can think of, in order for the circuit to use that energy, those electrons have to slow down. There has to be something resisting that energy to cause an, an object to, to activate. In this case, it would be a light bulb. So as the electrons come in, they're going to go across this wire and then go back out in your circuit. When you do that, those electrons slow down a little bit, causing your resistance to be some value. The higher the resistance, the slower your uh, electrons are going to move, the lower your current. For now, I'm going to skip electrical power, and we will come to that later. Uh, that'll be in part two of the video. But for now, I want to talk about specifically how to wire a circuit. So there's going to be two ways, series and then parallel. So in a series circuit, one resistor, or in this case, a light bulb, follows another. So you see you got one, two, and then three here. So you have to have, think about a book series. If a book series happens, you have to read the first book, then you get to read the second, and then you get to read the third. You cannot go out of order. If we were to look at in parallel, We've got one, two, and three. There's three different ways for my current to travel. And these branches are parallel to each other. Because of that, Ohm's Law follows some little bit of different special rules here. I kind of just recommend 
Um, you either have these in your back pocket for just memorizing them or able to logic yourself through it uh, because what's given on your reference sheet is not quite what is going to be on the next couple of slides. So you have resistors in series, resistors in parallel. How does that affect your voltage and your current? Before we can do that, we're going to look at a couple different schematics here. If you look at batteries, batteries denoted by a long, short, long, short, long, short, so on and so forth, where the long, or so yeah, the long side is going to be denoted as a positive, and the short side is denoted as negative. Resistors look like an EKG symbol. Um, they're just drawn with a little squiggly. Um, voltmeters circle with a V through it. Clearly, this is going to record volts. Ammeter circle with an A through it, and that's going to record current. So it's going to be amps. Switches, you now understand how switch works because the switch opens the circuit and causes it to be open. If you open the circuit, you can't uh, allow electricity to flow through. And the light bulbs can look like this with a little loop or sometimes denoted with just a circle with an X through it. Okay. How do the voltmeters and ammeters play their role? Um, and what do they look like in the circuit? So we've got a, a simple circuit here and everything I'm going to kind of say is, is written over here off to the side. So you're welcome to pause the video, read what's going on, or just kind of listen with me and, and I think you'll be okay. Since the ammeter reads the current, it has to be in your circuit. So I'm going to follow my circuit right here. All of my current is going through my ammeter. And then we go on our merry way. So if I want to record total current in a system, your ammeter has to go through your circuit or be part of it. Voltmeters have, have a, essentially a resistance of infinity because they measure the voltage across a, an object or a resistor. So voltmeters go outside of or across the resistor. So ammeters go through, voltmeters go across. If you end up uh, drawing your circuit wrong, like getting these backwards, your circuit just simply won't light up. Voltmeters tend to, if you plug them in uh, your circuit, the needle kind of bounces back and forth or your numbers are all across the board. Uh, same thing for the ammeter. Your circuit just simply won't work. How do we draw a circuit? I always recommend starting with the positive side and then drawing all your pieces as need. And by doing that, you're able to follow the path a little bit easier. So like this can be really easy to mess up. So what do I do is I start with the positive side of the battery, draw my schematics, and then continue on my merry way. Same thing here. I notice that my current starts. Oh, I go in two branches. So I'm going to do two branches, draw my two light bulbs, and then include my switch. Alrighty. So when you're drawing a circuit, it's easiest to start with the, uh, I would say, the battery first and then follow the loop according to what you see. All right, how does the, what does the math look like on these? Now, this is not given on your reference sheet. What is given on your reference sheet is how does a series circuit work exactly? Well, what's mentioned is it says R sub S, which means resistors in series, equals the summation of the number of resistors you have. Or you can think resistive is Resistance is an additive rule, so on and so forth. This is given on your reference sheet. Everything outside of this box is not. So if you want to, I would say, maybe memorize or understand what's going on with voltage and current, um, but you are not given this information specifically on your reference sheet. So what is going on here exactly? Well, for the resistance here is additive. Let's say, for example, each of these had 5 ohms of resistance. Because of that, resistance is additive, so resistance total is going to be 15 ohms. As we see here, my resistance total is going up. 
Well, because of that, my current is slowing down. And since my current is slowing down on all of the circuit, your current at any point, or your current total, is equal to the current at each resistor. If you think of voltage, which is your pressure, where well, your pressure is going to drop, and so voltage here is going to be an additive thing. I'm going to do an example here in a second to really unpack this and how do you how do you do this smoothly. But uh, when it comes to these, you're either I would say memorize these, have them in your back pocket, save them for later, uh, because there's not quite much given to you on your reference sheet. So how do we do this? What does this look like? All right, resistors in series. Well, if I just look at my reference sheet, resistors in series is a summation of your resistors. So we've got, I'm going to call this resistor 1, call this resistor 2, uh, so I'll resistor 3 since it's 3 ohms. Call it resistor 2. So summation of these, 1 plus 2 plus 3, gets me a resistance of 6 ohms. So my resistors in series, my total resistance is 6 ohms. Here's the next part. Here's where Ohm's Law is going to come a little bit into play. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Ohm's Law, where does that get me? Well, if we know voltage equals current times resistance, we have to denote what we're looking at. So I'm going to throw those totals in there. So total voltage, which is given in the circuit, is 12 volts. We're looking for total current. Resistance total is already found to be 6 ohms. So this gives my total current to come out to be, that's 2 amps. So my total current is 2 amps. All right. What do I do as far as this next part? How do I find the current across each resistor? This is the part where either you're going to have to help conceptually work your way through it or just kind of have some rote memorization. I now know that there are two amps going through this circuit. Since there's two amps going through the circuit, there's two amps here. So the current at one is also going to be two amps. Current at here is oh let's see that's two. Current at three is also going to be two amps, and then the current at resistor one is also going to be two amps. Pretty easy. So they are the same. It is constant. What is the voltage drop across each resistor? How do I find the voltage at each resistor? Well. Voltage 1 equals current 1 times resistance 1. Do I have the first voltage, or sorry, the first current and the first resistance? Well, yeah. So voltage 1 equals 2 amps times, well, the resistor at resistor 1 is 1, so we get 2 volts. So this is going to be 2 volts. We do the same thing here for the third 3 ohm resistor. It's going to be 2 times 3. This will get you, uh, oh, let me kind of do that a little bit. The voltage at the third ohm resistor will be 6 volts. And then the last one over here, voltage at the 2 ohm resistors is going to be 2 times 2. So the voltage here is going to be 4 volts. So very quickly, what do we do? We found totals, total, total current total uh, resistance, and then we then broke that down from there. So you have you have 2 volts, 6 volts, and 4 volts. Well, what do I know now? Well, let's double check our math. If voltage total is an additive rule here, well, what is 2 volts plus 6 volts plus 4 volts? That gets us back to our original 12 volts we started with. All right. What does it look like in parallel? Well, if we notice here, 
you can kind of see that your current has three different directions to go. So that means your current is no longer constant throughout the system. And now it breaks up in what we call these, these are called junctions. Is that the circuits split up, come back together, and so your current splits up into three different paths and then comes back together. There we go. So current is now additive in parallel circuits. Well, the problem you run into is that parallel circuits also have their own special math rules. Well, since my current is additive, my voltages are now constant. If voltages are constant, well, what does that do as far as my resistance goes? And my resistance, this is what's written on your reference sheet. It's a summation of an inverse additive rule. And so 1 over resistors total in parallel is going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, so on and so forth, until uh, you have all your resistors added up. We'll still hop straight into a uh, an example here. Before I forget, this is called Kirchhoff's loop rule. So when you're talking about current in parallel uh, circuits, uh, you, you often talk about Kirchhoff's loop rule. So what is going on here? Let's check this out. Our, I'm going to bring this over just a hair um, so I can manipulate this just a little bit better. Total resistance. Well, if we find the resistance in a parallel, if you look at your reference sheet, it says 1, one over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, so on and so forth. So in my calculator, I'm going to use that inverse button. Because 1 over 5 is the same thing as... 5 to the negative first. So I'm going to do 5 to the negative first plus 7 to the negative first plus 9 to the negative first. A lot of people will then, a common misconception is think they're just done here. They're done with what's going on here and they forget that this is still 1 over resistors in parallel so you still have to flip it again easy way to do that is just hit the negative first button on your calculator and you're done. So over here you get the resistors in a parallel to come out to be uh, 2.2 ohms rounding. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase this a little bit so i got some more space to work with. Alrighty. What is the total current? Well, that's going to be going back to the Ohm's law. Total current equals I total R total. Voltage is given in your circuit here. So you got 8 volts equals I total 2.2. .2. So your I total value here comes out to be, I believe it's going to be 3.6 amps. Now, let me hit pause on that. Let me double check and grab a calculator. Yep, we are still good. So the total current here is going to be, oh, somehow that got erased. So I'm going to do uh, current total equals 3.6 amps. Alrighty, what is the voltage across each resistor? Well, if I go back to what is the relationship with voltage in parallel, and we need to note that they are all the same. So in parallel, voltage total equals V1, equals V2, equals V3, so on and so forth. So each of these have 8 volts going to them. So voltage total equals voltage 1, equals voltage 2, equals voltage at 3, and that equals 8 volts. Alrighty. How do I then find would then be my current across each resistor. We're going to use 
that Ohm's law again, except we're going to look specifically at one part. The voltage, and we'll call this first one over here, that the 5 ohm resistor, the first resistor. The voltage is 8. We're looking for the current, and the resistance is 5. And so what we get here then is 8 divided by 5, and that gets me 1.6 amps. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move this on over. How do I then do this for... The second, well, we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're going to, instead of the first, we're going to do B2. So you get is 8 equals I2, resistance 2 is 7. So uh, the current going through the second resistor is 8 divided by 7. That is 1.14 amps. So I2 equals 1.14 amps. Last one, but surely not least, is what is the voltage through that third resistor? And that's going to be 8 equals I3. Nine. So it's eight. So the current going through the third resistor is going to be eight divided by nine, which is going to be oh, there we go. Eight divided by nine, which is going to be zero point eight nine amps. According to Kirk Kirchhoff's loop rule, my current is going to be splitting up into three branches and then coming back together. So the total current I started with up here is going to be equal to down there. Well, what is 1.6 plus 1.14 plus 0 0.089? And that gets you pretty close to your original current. All right. Now let's go for the next step. How do we take this a step further? What if my circuit had both of these? We call this a complex circuit. How do we simplify it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is find my resistors in parallel, and I'm going to simplify the circuit. So this first resistor up here is still going to be 80 ohms, but what is called the effective resistance, all right, the effective resistance right here? Well, that's going to be where these two are in parallel, so I'm going to do my inverse additive rule. And so that's going to be uh, 1 over resistor parallel equals 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50. So 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50 gets you at... Uh, so, uh, 100 divided by... This gets you an effective resistance here of 33.3 repeating. All right. So if you try that out, make sure you get the same resistance, same number as me here. If you got 0 0.03, you forgot to do the inverse rule again and flip that back over. All right, so now looking at here, what's the next step? How do I find the total resistance if effectively this is 33 ohms and this is now 80? Well, then, since those are in series, you would then add the 80 ohm resistor plus that effectiveness that we just found. So your resistance total would come out to be 80 plus 33, so it would be 113.3 ohms. Alrighty, so we got the total resistance to be uh, 113.3 ohms. How then do I find the total current? I'm going to go ahead and erase this part right here. And we're kind of done up here as well. 
my total current. We're going to go back to Ohm's law. So V total equals I total, R total. That's going to be voltage is 120. It's given over here. And we're looking for I total. Resistance total is uh, 113.3. So I total comes out to be 120 divided by 113.3. So my current is 1.06 amps. So I total equals 1.06 amps. All right, determine the voltage drop across each resistor. Here's where things are going to get a little bit more interesting. How do I determine the voltage drop across and current across each resistor? Well, I know that my first resistor right here is 100, has a, a current equal to 1.06 amps. That's because it's in series. So what's going on here exactly? is I have my current through this first resistor. So I'm going to say I at the 80 ohm resistor is going to be 1.06 amps. If you know current and you know resistance, you should be able to find voltage. So how much voltage is getting eaten up at this first resistor? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say V at the 80 ohm resistor equals I at the 80 R80. I'm going to go ahead and just erase this because that's actually not going to be used anymore. Well, voltage at the 80 ohm resistor is what we're looking for. Current is 1.06 times 80. So the voltage here is going to be 1.06 times 80. And that's 84.8 volts. All right. My total circuit, if we remember, we simplified this a little bit to look to where these two resistors were look like they were in series, that effectiveness. So I'm going to draw this real quickly again. If I know 84.4 or 84.8 volts is being eaten up right here, that means whatever is left over is going to be split up over here. That means my voltage left over from 120 is going to go right in here. Well, how much is left over? Well, that's going to be voltage total equals voltage of 1 plus the voltage going through 2 and 3. The reason we write it this way is because since these are in parallel, their voltages are going to be the same. So we have 120 equals 84.8 plus whatever the voltage remaining voltage is left over. So the voltage for 2 and 3 are going to be 120 minus 84.8 and that is 35.2 volts. Okay? So we know the voltage drop across the 80 ohm resistor is going to be 84.8. Since the the voltage for the 100 ohm and the 50 ohm resistor are going to be the same because they're in parallel, we know whatever's left over from the 120 is going to be there. We also know that the current at the 80 ohm resistor is going to be 1.06. We already calculated that earlier. But what about the current at the 100 and the current at the 50? You should be able to follow along with me at this point that the current is now going to split up into two paths and then come back together. Since the current is going to split up into two paths come together, my current is going to drop. But since these resistors are not the same, 
they're not going to have the same current drop. So how do we find this? Well, that's back to Ohm's Law one more time. I guess technically two more times if we're going to be specific. And that is voltage at the 100 ohm resistor equals the current at the 100 ohm resistor times the resistance of the 100 ohm resistor. So that equals 35.2 equals I at the 100 times 100. So the current at the 100 ohm resistor is going to be 0.352 amps. There's kind of two ways now we can figure out for the 50. We can do the same plug and chug we have here, or let's think on, I'll put on brake thinking caps on and do this a different way. Do I know the amount of current that is traveling into the circuit over here in total? That's a 106. So I know my current total breaks off into two branches, and that's going to be the current at the 100 ohm plus the current at the 50 ohm. So we have 1.06 is my total, and we now know that the current at the 100 ohm is 0.352. So that means the current at the 50 is then going to leave me at 1.06 minus 0.352, and that leaves me 0 0.708. There's a couple things I wanted, to, I wanted to note here. Did you notice that when we looked at these two resistors in parallel, that my total resistance was lower than 50? That's because when you have two resistors in parallel, it will always be lower than your lowest resistor. So if we got a resistor right here of 50, I don't care what the other branches are and what they're attached to, that effective resistance will always be lower than your lowest resistor. Also we found out that my current split up into two paths while we had more current going through the 50 ohm resistor than we did through the 100 ohm resistor. So even though they split up and came back together they were not equal splits of that current. Alright ladies and gentlemen I know I threw a lot of information at you but good luck if you have any questions, let me know. All right. And this has been Mr. Williams. And I will see you next time.